today to have uh, Karen McGinnis with us. Karen McGinnis is both a friend as well as a colleague in the area of women's health. Um, she has a counseling business that she, yeah, works at. Yeah, here, here, right in this <laughs> office. Yeah, this is her space. So we're really pumped because I really feel strongly that this is an area that um, we need to learn more about. Uh, this is an area that women need help with. And this is still an area that there tends to be a lot of stigma around, even with a lot of the new, um, I guess, awareness, there mm -hmm. still is a lot of shame and stigma that go around with receiving uh, mental health. So we are really excited to learn from Kara today and just to let you guys know that there is this resource available to you right here in Red Deer. So welcome Kara. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> so I'm going to get you just to start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about you. All right. So I'm Karen McGinnis. This is my space, my office here. Um, I'm right in El Physio with Nicole and Joelle and Craig. Um, so a bit about myself. I'm a mom. I have three little boys. Beautiful um, boys. Yeah, they're pretty cute. They're so cute. Um, age one, three, and five. Uh, so they keep me pretty busy. Mm -hmm. And now... One's in kindergarten, so that's pretty fun, getting to do that. Uh, I'm a wife. Um, my husband's pretty handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Drew. Yeah. Um, and you know what? A big thing is I am a career girl, too. Yeah. So a part of me is I love this. I love this job, and I'm pretty passionate, and I love to learn. So um, this has been a really awesome thing, mm -hmm. just to come and work with these girls and, and Craig. And so... Yeah, how I got here is kind of cool. Yeah. So I was a school counselor and a teacher for about 10 years, um, working with kids and youth. And, and then when I became a mama, um, my heart just really shifted. I just saw a lot of my friends and myself going through what was a really hard thing to navigate and figure out without a village and supports that we don't all necessarily have. So mm -hmm. um, a big thing was just, yeah, my heart looked at all these moms and I wanted to find a way to support them. So after getting my master's um, in psychology and counseling about five years ago, six years ago now, I'm getting old. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, this is kind of the next phase and awesome. I'm helping women. So that's yeah. why I'm here. Awesome. Can you speak to the population that you see? So primarily it would be women. Um, yeah. Just being in this clinic uh, however it's all different stages of life so I would say my youngest client is well actually she's about 10 <laughs> but normally I'd say I see about the 20s to 45 50 uh, for all different walks of what women are going through primarily though I do specialize in perinatal mental health so supporting moms um, during after pregnancy yeah and into motherhood really awesome yeah we could all oh, and couples. Sometimes I help couples journeying that, through during the season. Yeah, during yeah. the season. That so. is awesome because yes. that is a season or a time where there is a lot of change in marriage roles, in communication, in relationships, yeah. in sex drive, in all of the things. So all of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's just dive right in here, Kara, and talk to me a little bit about numbers. So what are we okay. talking about? Like how many women are affected, um, or I don't know if affected is the right word. That sounds like it's a disease or something, but like yeah. how many women, um, yeah, are experiencing, are experiencing some, some, some adjustments. Yeah. I really like, um, using the term adjustment because when we get into motherhood, um, it simply is. Right, right. So if yeah. we're talking numbers, we're all we're all hundred percent of us are adjusting, and so we're gonna have various symptoms and signs of things that look different. Yeah. Um, but if for postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety or mood disorders, um, it'd be about fifteen percent of women that are actually um, coming in, reaching out, getting support, um, things like that. So that's only what has been, I guess, recorded. Yeah. But a lot of moms stay silent. A lot of moms yeah. stay in isolation. So the numbers could be higher. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Why don't you kind of get into a little bit about 
birth trauma? Do you want to do that now or do you want to yeah. wait? No, and, and numbers yeah. for birth trauma, um, they're, this is fairly new. So I think that is something we don't quite fully know because they're actually recognizing it now in the DSM. They're diagnosing it. Okay. So birth trauma now, 1-3% to of mothers will um, actually experience full-blown PTSD Okay. with the birth of the baby. Yeah. Um, however, 25% will actually experience symptoms of it. So mm -hmm. we'll get into what that looks like, but sure. those are kind of the, the raw numbers at this point. Yeah. So yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. That's like one in four yeah. people. Like yeah. we all know people. That's a lot. Exactly. So sure. why do you think, why do you think like the numbers have grown or are they growing? Because I heard a stat, I'm terrible remembering details and numbers, yeah. but that women and not just talking about just postpartum women, but just like women in general now, um, the, the rates of anxiety, the rates of depression are very high. Like yeah. way more women than men now are experiencing these symptoms. Yeah. So maybe talk to me a little bit about what's going on. Are they actually higher now or is it just more recorded um, and, and why? Yeah, so this is something um, everyone's talking about. Yes. Everyone's asking, are the numbers going up? That's really um, a hard thing to get like hard facts on. But what I can tell you just through my research and experience and talking to other women in this field is we are looking to experts, physicians, social media, and everything so much more than mm -hmm. we're trusting our gut. So what they're finding is um, we're no longer the experts. So we're, we're seeking out and we're trying to get all this information as moms. And so maybe it does appear that we're, yeah, that we're not as, um, I don't wanna use the word equipped, but that we're definitely struggling more. And so a big part of that I think is that um, more people are talking about it. So maybe the numbers are going up. Maybe perhaps, um, I, yeah, it's a really tricky thing. Like I do have here, one of my statistics is 94% of women will not talk about what they're experiencing until someone else has talked about it. Hmm. And so we are finding now, because moms are talking, yes. like, hey, this is happening with my baby, Yeah. that we're starting to actually see that more are um, coming out of the woodworks. I guess you could say maybe a lot of moms just suffered a lot in silence before in isolation. Mm -hmm. Or the other part, Nicole, is that there was the village before. There was a lot more help. Right. And so maybe the numbers are rising too because there's less of that, yeah. less of that uh, community um, yeah. supporting moms. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, it's a hard one to really get down. And I and I have reached out to a lot of people saying, like, is this getting higher? Because it, it, like it, it just me. Because it just me. Because there's a lot. But yeah, the help in and in, in mothers primarily, even in Red Deer, has grown exponentially. Like right. they have set up to fifty percent more in the last. And I said years. that we're constantly looking to the expert rather than trusting we're the expert we're the mom and we do have a mom gut and and if yeah. we constantly are looking for them to solve our baby's not sleeping hire someone our baby's not pooping let's go do this our baby you know and we're constantly looking for looking um, out looking out rather than in what is intrinsically feel right and that's what so many of my moms come here and say well i'm being told i need to put my baby here because and I'm, i always say What's working for you? Oh, that's working really good. And when they identify that that's actually fitting and working for their family, it gets rid of the anxiety, the self-doubt, and the insecurity that builds yeah. when we're always looking outward for yeah. someone to solve that and, and yeah. kind of be the expert for us. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I remember when that made me think of one thing that Jen Binden, midwife, uh, said to me before we had her fourth, okay. and I was feeling like I didn't have all the things I needed. It was my fourth baby, mm -hmm. and she said, "Your baby needs a boob and a blanket and you. Like that's all." Yeah, and I, I love, love that. that. It's true. It's so true. And the power of the mom gut is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Tell me what is kind of one of the most common statements you hear from the from women that you work with or that you speak to um i hands down it's i want to feel like myself again kara mm -hmm. how do i how can i feel like myself again um and it's huge and i remember having that feeling myself mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. this feels so foreign who am i yeah and who am i in motherhood 
So, and not just motherhood and in just this stage of life. So I think a lot of us are struggling with that. Um, three things that come to my mind when I hear that though is, I want moms to know you're not alone, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's, we're all in it. We're in the trenches together. Yeah. Um, you're not to blame for how you're feeling yeah. and that you will feel like yourself again. It yeah. just might look different. Yeah. And so I think if I'd heard that when I was in the thick of it and I'm still in it, but that you're, yeah, you're not alone. A lot of women are, are feeling this. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, can I shuffle around questions? Yeah. Or will that make you feel uncomfortable? No, I can flip. I can flip. <laughs> Carol, was, she's like super prepared, which is awesome. Um, yeah. How can women differentiate between just adjusting? Yeah. I guess since we're speaking about that, and and something that actually is more and that does require more right. help. So some like the blues versus postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety, right? Um, so everyone experiences the adjustment, like we said. So mm -hmm. that will look like, or, or baby blues can just look like more sadness, more tears, yeah. um, just more anxious. You have a new baby, yeah. maybe your second, third, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Every time is an adjustment. So yeah, sure. um, I think that can look, you know, for about 10 days of just more weepiness. You're just not quite fully, your adrenaline's left your system, you know, and you do have to have this, this season yeah. of about 10 days to two weeks. Um, and if it carries on or it increases in intensity yeah. beyond that, that's when we look at, you know, this could be postpartum depression. Yeah. Um, this could be postpartum anxiety or both. Yeah. They often coexist together. Can so, you just take a moment and differentiate between the two? Because I feel mm -hmm. like we've heard a lot about postpartum depression yep. and maybe not as much about postpartum anxiety. Mm -hmm. Can you just speak to what the difference is? Absolutely. Yeah. So postpartum depression, um, you'd have more trouble concentrating, difficulty finding joy. You know, okay. that would be a big thing um, that you once enjoyed, right? Like not being able to get up and go for a walk. Right. It doesn't sound good to you. Yeah. Right. Um, sleep disruption. So. Everyone says sleep when the baby sleeps. Maybe you're having a hard time even getting up or falling asleep. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, bonding with your baby. Those are all signs of postpartum depression. Um, however, if you're experiencing postpartum anxiety as well or separate from that, it does look more like racing thoughts, uh, panic, maybe mm -hmm. obsessive worry. Yeah. The biggest one that no one talks about or I feel is starting to come out of the word works is anger and rage. So these yeah, outbursts, totally. and that's very attributed to anxiety. Yeah, And to label that is really important because these moms that come to me say, I don't know, I've never been an mm -hmm. angry person, Kara. What is going on? Mm -hmm. I remember me being too. in that season and having that same thought and being like, what is wrong with me? I, have, I am so angry yeah. and I've never been angry. Yeah. And then, I feel, then you feel so guilty because yes. you have these littles that are your treasures and you love and you're so mad at them. And then it just made, I felt oh, so guilty. The guilt, yes. I know. So that's, that's a good way of describing it. Thank you for bringing it. that up because I think that that is, and that also when I'm, you know, seeing a lot of my clients, I hear that a lot and, yeah. and it's the guilt part that kind of gets to you, right? Well, then it layers on. So you have the anger and then you have the guilt and then you have the shame and you just feel yeah. completely um, overwhelmed. Yeah. And so then your anxiety just goes higher, right? And yeah. and you do feel like you're drowning. <clears throat> yeah. And then adding on to anxiety is the fears, the worries, right. just kind of the compulsiveness to, you know, check your baby's breathing. Um, yeah. You know, just you feel like you're just never can get your head above water is mm -hmm. kind of what I hear moms describe when mm -hmm. they're experiencing one or both of those. Yeah. Um, the birth trauma, I guess the difference you could add in there that looks different between the three is that you will have this hyper vigilance mm -hmm. and you will have flashbacks, you might have nightmares, you might have um, just severe distress, yeah. right? And I've had moms describe it like just even driving past the hospital. Yeah. They'll have a flashback, they'll, it's like their, their trauma, it just comes right back mm -hmm. and it's like right there in their face. And, mm -hmm. and so that can feel, um, you know, having one, two, all three is just very overwhelming yeah, for, for moms. Sure. For sure. Yeah. And you do, you need help yeah. at that point, right? Yeah. If it's past the baby blues and yeah, that's, that's when you reach out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good just to, um, 
identify that it's real, right? Exactly. Like, it's, like it's actually a, a real thing, and it's not just, and it's it's beyond just. Oh yeah, I, these are the changes in our family, and we're just adjusting. When yeah. you're having those those reactions and those physical symptoms as well, it can feel very physical. Yeah. Um, that it's yeah. There's you need to seek out some some help for that. So absolutely. That's and don't awesome. be alone, right? Yeah. That's the biggest thing. And I'll say that about a hundred times. Don't isolate during those times. If you're having intrusive thoughts, that's a big one too that moms feel a lot of shame around. Yeah. Um, it's very common. It's yeah. it's actually part of your, built into your value system. So you'll have these thoughts that don't match how you're thinking, and so then you're like, ah, I can't think this, you know. Yeah. Um, but truly, that, that that's okay. You just yeah. need to talk to someone, and then it takes those thoughts, the power that they have over you, yeah. away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rather than just ruminating Sitting. on them. And, yeah. yeah. For sure. So, so can you speak to a second or for a second to this mom? So, um, maybe speak to the mom who does feel like she's drowning a little bit, mm -hmm. um, who does feel like she doesn't feel like herself anymore. She doesn't even know who she is anymore, um, and she's just feeling really overwhelmed and drowning. Can you speak to that mom right now or that woman? about what she can do. Like what, what's the next step here? What can they do to begin to move forward? Yes. Are you describing me? <laughs> and me. <laughs> I, I, I was, was like, like here. yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, the messy house, the chaos, the kids, the drowning. Um, yeah. We've all been there and yeah. we're all still in it to a degree, right? There are days, let me tell you. Yes. And, and yes. um, part of working in this community is you get to talk about it and normalize it. Totally. So that would be my biggest thing is for that mom to find her community. Yeah. Find her one friend. Find um, a mom, a partner that you just share that with. You yeah. say, hey, this was my day. Yeah. This is where I'm drowning. Yeah. And, and I think that's, again, just, just the openness of it. Yeah. It just kind of goes, oh, I was hurt. I was validated. That was that hard. Yeah. Or it is that hard right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also on top of that, I do think the community resources. Say you don't, you're new here. I have a lot of new moms that say, yeah, but Kara, I, I, don't, I can't find a friend. I don't have a community. I don't have that. Yeah. Um, you plug in. You find one in the community. And I have a ton on my website that are free. They provide childcare. You get a snack or food. Um, awesome. You get just time with other women saying, yeah. hey, this is that hard. Yeah. So... Take a peek on there and see if you can find ways to connect. Mm -hmm. My um, my biggest thing is that loneliness breeds loneliness. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we're feeling those things and we don't have anyone, uh, we're going to find ourselves just feeling that much more bombarded down. And, yeah. and we will stay stuck. We'll stay stuck in the house. We'll stay stuck with our kids. And yeah. it will be hard. Yeah. So reaching out is a big thing. Um, my one friend, I used to call her every morning. So, you know, the dreaded sleep training. Yep. Um, we called each other every morning and it was just a five minute check in to say, Hey, how's your night? Yeah. Yeah. Mine was bad too. Or, Hey, I tried this. Honestly, having that, it just, I knew I could get through the day. Yeah. And I also knew that she could get through the day. Yeah. Like we're in this, we're in this together. Yeah. So I think that's really important just for that mom mm -hmm. to know it won't always be like this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. You're also in it. Yeah. Right? It's hard when you're in it, yeah. but yeah. Um, so if you want to check out, I will go back to where you can get a hold of Kara after, but um, just to highlight, on her website she has a list of resources and groups that you can connect in mm -hmm. that if you're looking for a tribe, I know that's easier said than done, and you know, it's it easier to say, hey, you need to connect with someone or have a person, and sometimes that's not easy, so um, yeah, check out some of the groups that she has posted. Mom's groups are great, church groups are awesome, exercise classes can be super um, it does feel a little scary the first time and it makes you feel a little bit vulnerable to step out but to remember that most of us are in the boat together so um, if we can kind of keep that in mind I think that makes it a little bit easier so yeah. I think the toughest time I had is when I stopped reaching out to that friend with my second baby yeah um, I remember a shift happened I just wanted to isolate and go into my little shell and yeah. Honestly, I think that was the worst thing I could have done. Well, I know it was. And I didn't ask for help. Yeah. And so there were so many people 
that were offering it, but I wasn't willing to take it. Yeah. And so take sure. that help. Take right? the help. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. them in. Totally. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, okay. I, I'd love to move into um, maybe a little bit of talking about infant loss and miscarriage. So this is another area that Kara does work in. And maybe we can speak a little bit about that. And I mean, we know that miscarriage is very common. We know that it happens to a lot. It, a lot of women experience it. Is this something, um, and, and same with infant loss, like that is, it's, it actually is more common than, than we think or stillborn. Um, if you could speak to that, and is that something that women should seek out help for or, or when? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my experience with this um, is the earlier the better. Okay. Uh, I've had a couple moms who, you know, have come almost immediately after, um, you know, a mom who lost her baby at 37 weeks as a stillborn. She came probably the week after, um, and she said to me at the very end, you know, it wasn't even that long. I think we met for a month. Yeah. We did some art. We did some grieving together. We brought in her husband to a couple of sessions. And, yeah. and you know what she said at the end, which really has stuck with me? She's like, I know I would have gone downhill if I hadn't come in right away and just yeah. gotten the tools, been able to grieve properly, and yeah. just talk to someone. Yeah. Um, and the husband too, he just said, I like, this was so valuable just to have that. So I do want to say whatever it looks like earlier is better. Yeah. Right. Cause we don't get stuck and we're not alone. Yeah. Um, so there's that theme again. So, and there's so many community groups, so mm -hmm. you can go and, you know, talk as a group, right. And know that yeah. you aren't alone in this. Yeah. Hearts is Hearts a is really a great one. group. Yeah. And I know we both have clients and I know I've, and friends as well who have gone there and that's a phenomenal group and there's some others as well that yeah. Um, yeah like Avery's Garden is a good one just to go online if you're someone who just wants more of the online Callum's Cause is a local one um, Hearts again there there are a lot of things that you can do from the comfort of your home however I do encourage you to meet other moms not just online but I know a lot that that's easier so yeah and sometimes it, yeah it's okay to do a bit of both right yeah yeah. Um, and so I do say, yeah, talk about it. Let's, let's take away that stigma of not talking about miscarriage. Let's, let's tell people when it's going on for us, because I can almost guarantee when you do, someone else has gone through it Definitely. and you find that camaraderie and you feel just a bit more like, okay, yeah. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think that's all I had about that one. Okay. Boop. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Can we talk for a second about women who are not postpartum? Yes. And um, when Kara first started, I was like, can you say women for just like general life coping? How about some of that, like me? Yes. Um, so maybe we can speak to the, the uh, moms and women who are no longer postpartum and kind of just general, but they're kind of moved into a new season of like juggling and kids and running kids and activities and sports and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So can you speak to them um, and maybe a little bit about just the expectations that our culture has on women now and expectations versus reality and maybe some strategies Yeah, yeah. yeah. to help. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I think when, like what some of my favorite clients are actually the women, I learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. So they're past this stage or they're at the beginning. And you know what, they, I, I feel like the biggest theme I see is that we're juggling everything. Yeah. Everything, all of it. And I always call it the mental load that we carry is so massive. Totally. And so then on top of that, you know, they're dealing with their health and stress and um, just, yeah, regular coping, like you said. So I think yeah. a big thing is just to kind of sit down and talk about the best book you um, actually recommended was being present. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And you know, with social media and everything thrown at us, we do. We feel like we got to be the Pinterest mom. We got to do the parties. We got to yeah. work out. We got to make sure our kids are these yeah. elite athletes. We got to. And I think that that can just feel so overwhelming. Totally. The simple days are pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. So when I work with those moms, we just talk about simplifying. What can we do? to just kind of um, 
regulate your system yeah and just regulate what you're doing yeah and how much of it is is really working for you right how much is serving and and giving back to your family so we talk about priorities um, yeah. and we just break it down yeah and and so that's one thing is is too often we're taking on too much mm -hmm. um, this is a season of busyness mm -hmm. and everyone tells me you'll want it back one day but I I wonder that compared to what it used to be like um, right. yeah the slowing down is, is important so I do have on there yoga mindfulness mm -hmm. meditation podcasts Plug into what fits for you yeah. and just learn to slow down a bit. Right. Um, I'm going to start a section on my website on podcasts. So awesome. if you guys ever have any good ones, yeah. I know you do. Mm -hmm. Don't at me. Like, let's get moms feeling, if they are going on a walk, they can plug that in or not just moms, any woman. Yeah. And just find some peace and solitude and yeah. practical stuff, right? Yeah. So. I know one of the things that I have really... And this is, a, this is hard for me. If you're my client, I've probably <laughs> been open and talked to you about this. I, I, I'm not awesome at self-care. I'm really good yes. at talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not super at it, but it's something that I have, I've actually, at the beginning of every week, I write down in my day timer, I prioritize my health. Mm -hmm. Or else, like, I take time to take care of myself um, because that is that has been probably the biggest struggle I have had since becoming a mom yeah. and but I, I have also kind of as I'm learning how to do this seen the trade-off or seen not the trade-off but what comes out of that is that I actually am able to manage things better yeah. when I first, Take, take care, care of, of myself yeah and that's gonna look different for everybody and and for some people that's going and like crushing it out at the gym and like sweating and rock star yeah, yeah totally um, for other women it might be being in their bedroom by themselves with earplugs in to have a sustained period of just quiet and stillness yes. Um, for me, it's going outside, so I try and walk every day, and I usually do listen to a podcast or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think every woman does need to have time by herself every single day. Yeah. Even in the drowning, even in the kids climbing, noise, everything. Like, we do need even 20 minutes of, um, of time every single day, and I'm... Not a counselor or a psychologist, but I am a mom of four, and I do you know, know that. You know it. But that saved me, um, and I would literally go into my bedroom and put earplugs in my ears, and during quiet time or during nap time, <laughs> because I like I needed that twenty minutes. Like that was sacred time for me. And even still, when our kids are home, if they don't have school, we always have quiet time yeah. from like in the in the early afternoon. It was. It would, that's been kind of a overflow from nap time. Yeah. So it was started out as nap time, and then as the kids got older, moved into quiet time because they actually need quiet time too. And I think that's a beautiful yeah. thing to give as a gift to your kids is teaching them how to be still and teaching them how to be quiet. I agree. So that was like a, a really big thing for me. I, and I like that. Earplugs. One time I went into the shower. I remember this day. I went. The kids were were all little and not napping. And it was not a good afternoon for me. I went to the basement shower yeah. and shower for 45 minutes. Good. I that actually just, use that as one of my do, things. Do you? Yes, I just say go and have a shower. They, they were all safe and they were to. all in yeah. their cribs and they were all happy and fine. That's okay. I just needed a moment. And honestly, it's the best tune out. I, I will do a bath with um, headphones, like either watching a movie set up yeah. on my tray, yeah. um, whatever it is that you can unwind and disconnect. Yeah. just being full-time yeah all the time. so that you then can be present you then can be patient you then can you know be the more in yes in yeah best. I know like yeah I love and, and hate the saying the mom is the heartbeat of the home but part of that is this acceptance for myself of knowing that if I if I like, I can't pour from an empty cup. I know that if I have yeah. to be the heartbeat and if everyone's kind of going to be feeling mom's energy, because they do, I have to take care of me. Yeah. And they're going to feel it. And um, you're right. When I 
take that 20 minutes when Drew gets home from work and I just say, hey, I'm just gonna either go for a walk or a bit of a disconnect. Yeah. I'm I'm refueled. I'm yeah. ready to go the rest of the night and do bedtimes and all that stuff. But yeah. otherwise I just turn into a pretty angry, overwhelmed mom. Totally. Snap at the piece of dirt on the floor. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> real life. Yeah. Oh, um, and give yourself compassion. Oh, that's a good one. That's a big one. Self compassion and grace. Yes. Hey, we're gonna screw up. Yeah. We're not perfect. Yeah. And so I often say that you do your affirmations and intentions, but at the end of the night, I'll say, what did I love about myself today? What did I do that was good? Cause I can be pretty hard on myself as everyone knows. So I will just give myself compassion and go, Hey, you know what? Even though you snapped here, you went and shot pucks with your son and yeah. you had fun. Give yeah. yourself those moments where you recognize the good. Yeah. It's important. That's awesome. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to share, Kara, that I haven't asked or that I skipped over or anything? I have, um, just my favorite quote. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find it, but it's, I'm a, I'm a quote girl. As you see, if you'll see any of my social media, I really, I do think it's just so, it keeps me on. But the one is about moms being born. Where did it go, Nicole? Oh, why can't I remember it? It's, it's pretty much around, so when a baby is born, so is a mother. And so who do we need to be also taking care of? Because we focus on the baby. Yeah. And I think we just also need to go back. And, and I wish I would have talked about that in the postpartum, but yeah. they're also being born too. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess just think about that when you have uh, mm -hmm. your supports in your community. Just check in on that mom. Yeah. Don't just be like, how's baby eating? How's baby pooping? How's baby... Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. How's things going? Like, yeah. are you getting sleep? Yeah. And I think if we did a few more check-ins on the mom, uh, I don't know. I yeah. think there's some value in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and checking in again. But that's, that's awesome. That's kind of my my biggest stuff there, my friend. Awesome. So if people are looking um, or wanting to get a hold of you mm -hmm. or touch base with you, how can they go about doing that? So you can come here. You come to El Physio. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm located just in their space here. You can find me online, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram. What's your website? Just my name, www.caramcginnis.com. Okay. Um, yeah, and just my name is, you can just search my name and mm -hmm. find what I offer. See if it's a good fit for you. Yeah. Um, give me a call, ask me questions. It's a pretty open book. Yeah. I, I just encourage, if I can be one part of the village, yeah. If you need it, I'm here. Yeah. Right. And That's I can awesome. connect you. Totally. So great. Yeah. Well, I hope you found that valuable and, um, yeah, know that there are resources out there and, and maybe you don't have to be completely drowning and submerged before you seek out some help also. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So can we show my favorite questions? two books behind you? Oh, sure. These ones I, I pass out to a lot of moms. So this is that present, not perfect, present, present over, over perfect. Shauna Nyquist, this is this was this changed my life. Yeah, actually, truly, it's yeah. it's amazing. <clears throat> and then this one, I just love it. You've got this, Mama. And there's just a lot of um, cool things about just embracing motherhood. So, so if you need something tangible today, great. Thanks, right. Kara. Hope Bye. you enjoyed. Bye. Bye.